All right, hello everybody. It is Tammy with Stamp and Scrap Tammy coming to you with a Facebook Live on Thursday, um, May. I have to look at the calendar. I'm losing track of days. Thursday, May 21st. So welcome everybody. I'm gonna give it a second for everybody to find me. And I'm hoping I'm in the right spot because I cannot get my computer to turn on. It's right over here. And it's just completely locked up on the on the first screen. So I tried to restart it and it's doing the same thing. So I'm gonna have to look into that later. I didn't wanna keep you guys waiting. So lots to talk about today. I have an awesome, awesome demonstration today. It's really stepping outside of my box. It is doing some coloring techniques with the pigment inks that we have. They are really fun. It's definitely taking it a step past um, simple stamping. It's still actually very simple once you get going, but it's a little intimidating to start. So I wanna show you how easy it is to do and really how fun it is. It's something I don't normally do, but it's really a lot of fun. I started making it, well, I started projects with it. I just did some backgrounds last week. And then last night, I really finished them off and made some more cards, and then I made some more cards and some more cards, and you know, and you know how that goes. All right, and so a couple things to talk about before we flip it down. There's a new catalog, and actually there's two. So these I did send in the mail to some of you that I had your addresses on my mailing selector through Stampin' Up. And if you did not get one, well, I shouldn't say, if um, you're wondering if you're getting one and you haven't gotten, because you haven't gotten it yet, let me know. And then I will check on if I sent you one or not. Um, if you're not on my mailing selector, if you've never ordered from me or um, you don't think that you are, let me know and I'll make sure that you get one. Orders that are being picked up at my house, I will have some of these in a little basket in the bin. So you're welcome to take one so that you have it. And there is, so some of you picked one up the other day when you picked your order up, but I didn't yet have this cute little brochure. And so you're welcome to take one of those next time you come. Uh, or if I'm mailing you stuff, I'll send one in there with you. And there's some really cute stuff. I can only show you the covers of these right now. I'm not digging into this stuff just yet, but I do want you to have this in your hands by June 3rd when ordering becomes available. Now I did accidentally this morning send off an email that I had previously scheduled way back when I planned my schedule out for the first six months of the year, I would be having a class in June at the event center at the American Inn. And so that email to um, begin starting registration went out today. Now that was a mistake, it should not have gone out. So probably about 15 minutes after that, I sent a follow-up email that stated that all events through June are planned to be uh, just as to go options still as we've been doing. That could change if things change drastically between now and the end of June where we are able to meet in some small groups. But um, planning wise, I'm not planning on having any in-person things just yet. Hopefully come July, we can start making some small group um, plans. And so we'll just kind of play that by ear. I don't want to plan too far in advance because like when I plan too far in advance, I accidentally send out emails that shouldn't go out. So just uh, be patient with me and thank you for those that are just um, hanging in there with me because this is just a different kind of situation. All right, so I'm um, talking new catalog too. I will do a virtual catalog launch party, maybe even a couple of them. Uh, to share new ideas and do catalog walkthrough and projects I've been working on and I'll be getting all kinds of swap cards coming up. Uh, so just stay tuned for information on when we're going to have that. I've been just kind of holding tight to see how this was all going to play out before I plan dates and things. Uh, but before we can talk about new catalog, we do have to talk about everything that is retiring. So we have the virtual retirement party happening next Wednesday. And it is Wednesday, May 27th. There'll be two Facebook Lives, and then I will post periodically throughout the day other projects, a few videos from Stampin' Up. So it'll be a full day that you'll be able to pop in and out and see different projects. And that, that page will stay, or group, I should say, will stay live. So you'll be able to go back to it and check out different ideas anytime that you'd like. So join the group. Uh, the link to join will be in the comments. Also, I'll be sharing, uh, sharing that in the weekly email. Um, you can search virtual uh, retirement party by Stamp and Scrap Tammy, and you should be able to find the group that way too. But I'll have lots of sharing um, ways to join the group between now and then. If you are in the group already, keep watching. I'm sending out past cards or posting past cards that we've made 
this last year. And then also probably come Monday, Tuesday, I will post another um, kind of survey thing that will uh, act as your door prize slip. We'll have door prizes again, uh, just like we did for the last virtual party we did in April. So that'll be a lot of fun. Fill that out. Even if you did fill out the last one, fill it out again so that you can get entered for the door prizes. That's how I keep track of um, door prizes. So that is all wonderful things happening. I think that's all I have. I'm just looking at my notes here to make sure I don't miss anything. Okay, I think I covered it all. I'm going to turn it down. I'm going to show you right away the next um, basic card kit that um, I have going out. I'm going to look here if I can see. Here we go. If I can see on my computer if it'll come on now. But it's not looking like it's going to. So I'm going to actually take a second here to move my computer out of the way so that I have a little more space on my table when I start moving things out of the way. All right, so thank you guys for watching. I see some of my Stampin' Up! friends here are watching. So hello, I'm not able to scroll. I might be able to, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna chance shutting the video off since we're going here. So thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you say hello. Uh, maybe give me a little thumbs up, maybe even a thumbs down if you think this is too messy as we get going, it might be. All right, so these, this is the next basic kit that's gonna be free with a $20 order. Um, I will ship it to you for free with a $50 order. Of course, if you're local, you're you know more than welcome to pick it up with the $20 order for free. If your order is 20 and you'd like me to ship it, I'll just send you an invoice for $3 for the shipping. So these two cards, I have to say, these are cased from my friend, Brendan Nelson. She is from Canada, and um, I will say I case a lot of her stuff where pretty good friends and share lots of ideas. And so if you are looking for a good Pinterest page to follow, she is stamping, I believe it's like stamping in my stretchy pants. It's Brendan Nelson. Um, it's a good, good page to follow. Lots of fun ideas. She does a lot of scrapbooking too. And then these are the other two. So I did keep these very basic as far as the stamping goes. Here, let me pull this in again. So it's very easy for you, since we are doing to-go still, for you to fill in a different sentiment here versus what I use. These are both from the witty Sisms. And then this is from Rooted in Nature. But easily where you could put something else in there. Again, those are the ones that are free. Here's a new host code. This is new from last week. So go ahead and write that down if you'd like. It'll be in the comments as, or in the post as well when I edit it. All right, these are the stamp sets I'm using today. This one here has been one of my favorites. I should show you. So this I got back before we had cling. As you can see, it was very well used. Um, so this one is retiring. It's called Beautiful Day. And then we have Itty Bitty Greetings. And I also used for the first time dandelion wishes, which also this was a clear mount. I don't have it. Now if you order it, you would get it in the cling. But this was, um, I've had this for a long time without using it. So I'm happy that I finally uh, found a use for it. Okay, so goodness, I'm kind of nervous about this because I am going to use, these are the supplies for today. So as you can see, quite messy. If you know me, you know that this is not normal. This is not normal at all. This is not something I would typically be brave enough to, I wouldn't be brave enough just to do, let alone on a Facebook Live. So this might be, this This could go south in a hurry. So, you know, bear with me to watch me make a huge mess or it'll be very successful, very messy. It might be all of the above or maybe it'll go smooth, but we'll see. All right, so let's start. I have a little list of how I want to show you this. So bear with to the end. There's something for everybody. So I am using the pigment ink sprinkles. Let me show you those. Might as well just bring them up here. So this is what they look like. And there are, let's see, I got a count here. It looks like here, the colors are already on the top. I didn't do that. They come like that. Okay. So this is the colors, you get six of them. I believe they are on sale now for like $16, you get all of these. And this ink, it's little sprinkles is what it is, will last you a lifetime. So really super fun. 
All right. So let's see. As you can see, I'm kind of stalling here. Again, I'm like a little nervous about this. This is kind of like when I ran that um, embossing folder through the first time live without ever trying it before. Although I have tried this. So I do know that it works and it's fun. I'm going to see if I can switch the light a little better here without it falling over on me. Okay. So I just have some watercolor paper here that I cut in half. Our watercolor paper comes in, um, I don't remember how many sheets are in there, but it's, it's I just cut it in half. So it's seven, um, I'm not sure what the length on that is. But anyway, so I could just cut it in half. So I have three and a half, two, three and a half sheets. And so first what I'm gonna show you is how to make kind of a messy background. Or not kind of, it, it is a messy background. There's no doubt about it. And let's see, I need, so what I need is obviously I need the powdered ink, the um, pigment sprinkles. And then what you do want to have is a water spritzer. So I have that ready to go with water in it. And then all I'm going to do, and it does not take very much of this, which is why I say it lasts a lifetime. So I'm going to go with the yellow and the green, or this is actually kind of an orange, uh, mango melody. So I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to put three colors on here. So I'm going to do the a little bit of that. And every time you make these, there is really no way to make this the same every time. And if there is, I haven't figured it out. Not with doing it this way anyways. And then let's grab just a little bit of yellow, the Daffodil Delight. So that's all I'm going to do on that one. This next one, so I'm going to do two of them to show you. And the other one, I'm going to do Melon Mambo. That's probably way more than what I need, but you know, why not? If I'm gonna get messy, I might as well just go crazy. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of this um, gorgeous grape. And I think just for fun, cause I do need to use a little of this, I'm gonna put just a little of that on the other one. I'll set those back in my bin. And then all you have to do is spritz it. So this is where it can get kind of messy. And that's all you, all you got to do. That's it. So that, and then you can let it dry. Now, just because I don't want to get my hands too dirty, if you wanted to, I should have brought some paper or rubber gloves. Well, I am going to do it. Why not? I have a washcloth here that I can wipe my hands off. You can, um, Kind of do this with it and you can get it more wet, which is why you want to use watercolor paper. And so that's part of it. And so then you need to let them dry. So that's why I'm going to just set these aside. And I did these last week overnight. I dried. They maybe wouldn't take that that long, but let me move that aside. And then I will show you the cards that I did with that technique. I just layered up the backgrounds and then I did use the um, COVID-19, the Sharing Sunshine um, printout and just added a sentiment and some um, ribbon and things. So very easy to do. And I'll post pictures of these finished cards. So this is a messy background. So I'm not typically a messy background kind of person, but if you are, this is perfect. And it, you know, and then once you add your sentiment and some ribbon, it really softens it up. It's really fun. These are really fun backgrounds to use um, if you're making cards with kids. They love it. It's super fun. And then let's do one more. Wait, okay, I'm going to grab another sheet of this paper here. Okay, and I'm going to show two different tech. I'm going to show that a little bit. I'm trying to decide how much I'm going to show you here. Okay. Now I'm bringing the Stamparatus in because I want to show you how to heat emboss because when you heat emboss and then put the sprinkles on, it's a great way to do it. You don't have to worry about your inks mixing. And so I already set up my Stamparatus. I have another piece of watercolor paper. I'm using the Butterfly Stamp from the Beautiful Day Stamp Set. And I'm just going to get that inked up nice and good. And if you can see, this has gotten really used, which is just fine. And I'll show you why. So when they come, when the Versa comes, it's pretty clear. 
but as you use it and get different things on there, it can get kind of dirty, which is okay because I'm going to put black embossing powder on here. And it's not a bad thing when you can see where your Versa mark has gone. All right, so let me pull this out and I'll move my Stamparatus. Yes, that is correct. Um, Sarah Douglas is going to be live at three. I'm not sure. Is that on her personal or on the Sarah Douglas page or on Stampin' Up? I haven't looked. I have a meeting. I have a Zoom meeting at three. Um, so I'm not going to be able to catch it live, but I'm going to for sure watch the replay. All right. And so I'm going to take, this is retiring. Um, it is called the Shimmer Black Embossing Powder. Did I get a package of supplies? What kind of supplies, Connie? You'd have to be just a little more specific. I did get a couple orders in. I had one that come, came this morning. I haven't looked at it yet. I do have some ribbon for you though, Connie. Um, coming. Let's see, or not coming, it, it got here. It should be in that order today. I guess I didn't confirm that it's in there, but it should be. All right, so I'm going to just set this aside. And thank you. I think it was Victoria that said the coffee filter. I was out of paper plates that I normally use for my embossing powder. And so I did this, and it's working great to have all three of my embossing powders that I'm using with these pigment sprinkles. I'm all next to each other, but they're all staying neatly separated. I am rinsing my fingers off here. And so, yeah, I'm showing you the pigment sprinkles today. And then now I'm showing you heat embossing. So you do your Versa, you put your powder on, and then we just use our heat tool to heat it up. And so I'm gonna do this kind of close up. So if you haven't done this, hopefully you can see um, when it changes, or when it starts to change. It does take just a minute to get going here. Oh, yes. So, Connie, I did get your ribbon here. I'm going to just mail it to you unless you're making a trip in. So you just just text me and let me know. Otherwise, I'll drop it in the mail tomorrow or maybe even this afternoon. I'm going to the post office today. All right. So then that um, while I'm waiting for this to heat up, and this is a shimmer black. So like I said, it is retiring. It's really fun, though. This is one of those things come this time of our catalog. I start using up all of these things that I think, why didn't I use that sooner? Okay. So there we have that. And I'm going to bring in two things. And I also, let me see if I did that one already. Oh, I did. So I'm, I already did this one in white. If you can see, I did it with the dandelion wishes. And so I'm going to show you on the same sheet of paper um, how to do that as well. And I'm going to need some paper towels for that one. So on the butterfly here, I'm going to use the same technique that I did for the messy background. And then on this one, I'm going to do it just a little bit different. But I'm going to leave them on this sheet so this way I can move them out of the way to dry together. And I'm going to see what colors I want here. And so I'm going to really just try to put a very little bit, which is kind of hard to do because they're so fun. So I'm putting it the smallest amount that I can handle putting on. And you can always add more. So I do know you could get your paper wet and then put it on as well. So maybe I should try that too. I haven't tried that. I forgot about that. So you can, let's do that up here. Oh no, what am I doing? See, I told you this could go crazy. Here, I got another one. So let's see what happens. So I haven't tried this. So let's just happen, see what happens when you put your water first. So you can see there was a little ink there already. So you can do that as well. Look at how fun that is. And then we could add a little more green and then you have another, another different look to that. And so now let's go ahead and I am going to have to grab another sheet of paper. Let's spray this one here and then you can see 
how that one comes together. And now let me show you a finished card that I did with that one. And actually, what I also did is before it dried, I squeezed my Wink of Stella. Oh, this one is gonna be really pretty on there to give it some glitter. So you can see, very messy, or it has the potential to be very messy. And I'm just gonna stop there and leave it. And then this is how I finished that one off. And then I'm gonna show you next. So this is a very messy look. And then let's go ahead and look how you can make it a cleaner look with the same inks. So depending on your style of stamping, same thing, I just heat embossed that congratulations from the Itty Bitty Wishes. But we're gonna go ahead and try this one now. And then I'm gonna end it with, um, actually I gotta show you the dandelion first, but I'm gonna end it with showing you, um, so let me move this out of the way. I'll end it with showing you a really quick gift card holder. Okay. So we need, do need to finish this one up. And so this one, I'm going to use some um, Mango Melody and the Daffodil Delight. So as you can see by my fingers, I've washed them a bunch of times and uh, I still have some of this on there. So same thing, I'm gonna use my water spritzer But what I'm gonna do this time, instead of leaving that on there to dry, I am going to go ahead and um, pat all the extra water off of there. Now I could spray more water if I wanted that to blend more, but I don't, I think it looks nice that way. And so that is how you get that look. And let me show you the finished card that I made with that. I just, again, same as the other cards, I layered it up, added a sentiment from the Itty Bitty Wishes, and added some ribbon, and that's all I did to finish it. Added some coordinating colors, and it is done. So again, this is pretty much simple stamping as far as the backgrounds, the layouts, very simple. And once you do this, you realize it's really not that hard to do. Uh, something very intimidating to start. And in fact, I just got this stuff for the kids to play with. I thought it would be fun once we ended up in quarantine um, that they would have something to play with. And then I started doing it and I'm like, wow, this is maybe for me. Okay, so I'm gonna set this one aside to dry. I'll finish that card off after it's dry. I'm gonna have these little placemats sitting all over my craft room. And okay, so last mat. So this will be the last, let me throw that away, card technique I'm going to show you with this. And you know, after that, and I didn't have enough to do it this way. So I'm just going to take six different cups. Let's see, four, see if I can count. And now we have six. And let's see where we want to start. So I have already, because I did already show you how to heat emboss, I've got one in the copper. And then I also have done one in black to show you how I did that. And I was just going to do one, but I think I have plenty of time to do two. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of the powder in the cup. And I'm going to set my ink up top because as you can see, this is green but it looks kind of orange. And I'll just stick a little bit in each one. And you could easily, of course you don't really need to conserve this stuff because it's, there's so much of it there. But if you wanted to and you were gonna use this pretty often, you could just put a cover on these and um, use them again later. Or to save your cups, you could do that. And so the reason I'm putting the colors is so I can tell, again, they all look very similar. Yeah, Peg, I think that my favorite one is a dandelion too. I think it's really fun. But I did really enjoy um, doing using um, these inks this way too that I'm going to show you. And I do need a scratch piece of paper. 
See, I should have one sitting around here somewhere. Here we go. And I'm gonna pull a chair up and sit here while I do this. See if I can see what I'm doing. Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna use now is I do have a full set of our Stampin' Blender pens. These work really well to color over uh, when you use colored pencils. It makes it look like a marker, and I found it really well or really nice to use with this. We do have some new aqua painters coming out. That would be a nice um, concept too, but these were a great option for this particular project. So now you just go ahead, I just dab it in here, and then you decide where you want to color. And so I'm just going to pull a little bit of the ink off. And so you'll be able to see the powder on the tip. And if I wanted it darker, I could just grab a little bit more powder out of my cup. And it's nice to use. You can use different kinds of paper. But what is nice about using the watercolor paper is if you co keep coloring on it, it's not the paper's not going to fray like a regular... Um, kind of paper possibly would. Um, oh, Brandy, okay, so yes, these are set, these are sold as a set. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, um, here, now I'm gonna go with the yellow. So yes, these are sold as a set. Um, they were $22 or so, and now they are on sale um, for 16 and some change, I believe is what they are. And they are on the retirement list, so it, if it's something that you'd want, you'd want to get it in the next uh, couple weeks. So by June 2nd, June 3rd, our new catalog goes live. And I might as well pull some over here since I already have the ink on there. And I do like to keep my blender pens and kind of color families. So now when I'm done with this yellow, I can go ahead and color off and it'll take a lot of the color off. But now I'd maybe use this side for the orange, you know, so I wouldn't um, then go and use it for a completely opposite color. So let's go ahead and put that here. I'm just going to um, kind of color whichever way I want. I didn't, I don't know my butterflies all that well. If you did, you could certainly color them how they are different butterflies are supposed to be. But like I said, I don't really know my butterflies. And then I did find that the darker colors are really dark. So that's why I wanted a scratch piece, which I guess I have this here. So I can use my mat for this as well. And so you see the yellow and the orange are real similar. So you do, if you want to have a darker orange, have to I did notice I had to keep pulling more of the powder in because they're really similar. But it gives it a nice blended look. All right, and then let's go ahead and grab, let's see, it looks like that one I have already kind of a greenish tip. So let's go with, oh, because I did do the green. So let's do a green on here. I didn't do green on this one yet. And then I'll set those aside so I don't mix them up. All right, so I'm gonna move the green, and let's see, and I did these two. And now let's pull in the purple. And so this is where, when I did it, um, I went ahead and colored off a little bit, and I'm gonna start lighter. And I really found that with the Bermuda Bay, the blue on there. It got really dark. All right, so what is everyone thinking? So would you be, and there's no wrong answer, would you be in the category of the messy technique or this clean technique? Again, no wrong answer. Everybody likes to do things a little bit differently. If you like to get messy or do you like the clean? Um, you know, Mary Alice, I never realized you could either, and I don't know if you're supposed to, but I guess here I am, I'm doing it. So <laughs> who knows, maybe I'm doing something new. I, I, I doubt it, but you never know. Um, I never thought of it, but last night when I was doing it, I was um, trying to 
figure out a way to make it a little bit neater because again, I'm not normally a very messy stamper. It's not my thing to get all messy and get my hands like this would be, oh my, like, wow. I don't know. That's not normal for me. So, um, but I do like, I like the outcome. So I don't know, maybe I'm up to trying something new with this new catalog that's coming out. So now I'm going to set this purple aside. So I love it. So I guess more of my friends are messy than I thought. <laughs> now, if you looked at my room, you would know, you would think I'm like a messy, messy stamper because my room is a disaster right now. I don't even, oh man. I can't even tell you. And I keep cleaning and cleaning and it just keeps getting messier and messy, Mess messier and messier. I don't know if that's a word, but I think with having a catalog going out, I'm still making lots of stuff from that catalog for the retirement party and just samples and things I want to make sure to use and, and things I'm going to be sad to see go. And then at the same time, I'm bringing in new products. And so I want to get started using those. So I have like stacks and piles of everything everywhere. But it's fun. And so that's kind of my plan today is to um, do some cleaning and organizing. And I have a couple meeting things to listen to and, and participate in, but they're very, um, I don't know what the right word is, but I'll be able to like do other things as I'm listening. So that'll be nice. I should be able to get some things done while I'm listening this afternoon. And now I'm going to take the Melon Mambo and then I'll decide what I want to end and my last color, or last couple things with. So look at how fun this is to color. Now you could do this with re-inkers too, if you like, but it's always fun to try something new. Or if you've tried it before, um, to do something different and not always just use our regular ink pads and markers. And looks like we need a little more pink up here or Melon Mambo, I'm sorry. And if you have gotten your catalog, I haven't memorized the new in-color names, but man, is there a fun um, color in the new catalog. I think it's called like Magenta Madness. I'm not sure if that would be right. You'd have to, someone would have to correct me there. Oh gosh, I see Barb is watching. Hello, Barb. Barb is my mother-in-law. So thank you for watching, Barb. And everybody else, too. I really appreciate it. Like I said, this was kind of a brave thing to do is this coloring technique on a live video. Oh, give it a spritz afterwards. Huh, we should try that. Yeah, good idea, Mary Alice. Okay, I'm going to do that because I don't, these, I don't need for anything. I'm just coloring them to show you. Oh my gosh, that is a really good idea. Now I want to hurry and finish to see what it's going to look like. So as you can see now, this is this green that I'm doing. Well, I keep saying green, but in the pigment ink sprinkles, it's actually um, falls under Bermuda Bay. So when I have more on there, it shows up more of a green color and less it shows up like Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to just, I need a, well, it doesn't matter. We'll just keep going here because it looks fine. Because now we have to see what it's going to look like after we spritz it. You know, it'd probably be good if we dropped a few drops of Wink of Stella on there too. Or... Okay, so I'm going to just set this one aside. So this is the one that I'll show you for the gift card. So I hope you guys are sticking with me here. And if you're not, catch it later because I'm going to show the gift card holder at the end. This is a little bit longer than normal. Um, just because I really wanted to show you some of these. So I have... Lots of glitter on here from when I just um, dropped it. And so that's what I'm going to do here because I don't want the colors to mix too much. So there we got glitter. Always need some glitter. And here we go. Okay, so I'm going to move these out of the way so that I don't end up dropping them. I just saw, briefly saw someone's comment that they dropped something like this. And yes, that could get really messy. And so I have avoided like a huge disaster so far. So let's just see if we can continue that. And let's see if I can move that in a little closer. Look at how fun that is and how glittery. Okay, now we are going to try this. So this is new too. So this may work. This may not work. 
So it looks like it pretty much stays in place, but let's see what it happens if you now pat it like we did the dandelion. So it's gonna mix just a little bit, it looks like. And you could play around with now, you know, moving it back and forth like so. But let's see here now. And oh, wow, that's really pretty. So what you could do if you don't like all the spritzing around the background, ooh, it even makes your paper towel pretty, is you could let this dry. Look at how cool that is. Good idea, Mary Alice. You could let this dry and then fussy cut it out if you don't like all of this background. So that's kind of a mixture of the the messy versus not. And you could keep spritzing this. That's what's nice about watercolor paper. You can get it pretty wet without having any trouble. So you could certainly try using other papers. The shimmer white I did use on some and that worked fine too. You wouldn't wanna get that overly wet, um, but it worked okay. So I'm gonna set this aside. Now that I have it wet, I'll set it to dry. And then, so the last thing I'm gonna show you is what I did, and I've made these a couple times, I think quite a while ago, I showed this on a Facebook Live. And then we've made these a couple times in classes, but what I wanted to show you is how to make this super cute gift card holder, and I forgot to grab a gift card. So you'd put the gift card in here, and then in here is where you would put your sentiment. So I'm not gonna do all of the, um, uh, embossing and things on this because we already did. But what I'm going to show you is how to go ahead and design this just to fold this up. So I'll show you the basics of it. All right, so this is the measurements you would need. You would need one of our treat bags. And I wanted to show this one more time because these are retiring. I would imagine at some point we'll get some sort of treat bag back. But um, these are going to be retiring, so I wanted to make sure I showed it. All right, so this is just our regular treat bags. And you're going to score it. Of course, I already scored this one, but what you're going to want to do, let me see if I can pull this down here a little bit. So you're going to want to put your edges, the top, if you want this to fit in an envelope, okay? If you want it to fit in one of our standard envelopes, you're going to want the edges, so the top of it and the corner. And then you will just go ahead and score it at four and a quarter. Again, I don't have it. Oh, here, I'll just use my bone fold. So you're going to score it at four and a quarter and then you'll be able to fold it up like so. And then all I did to make it stay in place, so I'll leave these here so that you can get them, um, get the measurements if you'd like. And then you're just gonna take a piece of ribbon, any ribbon will do. I'm gonna use, prefer the Daffodil Delight with this project. And then let's tie, just to tie a nice bow. You could also take a piece of paper. I've done that before too, where I've used more of a belly band to go around here to hold it in place. I don't um, tend to put tape along the sides because I want that inside to um, be able to flow in and out of there uh, smoothly without getting caught on the sides. And sometimes when you put tape on these sides, it, you know, you put it too far in and then it doesn't stay. And we're just gonna tie a nice big floppy bow. And hope that the ink, it looks like it stays on your hands pretty good, that you don't have to worry about it transferring uh, to your project, so that's a good thing. Again, it's something I've had for, I think I ordered it in March. I think I ordered it right before it went on sale. Wouldn't you know that's how it goes. All right, and so that's really all there is to, to making your the, the basics of it. And then what you do is, you know, maybe I should do this quick. Why not? Then you're gonna fussy cut this out, this very pretty butterfly that we did. And so as you see, the copper matches the copper foil on the treat bag perfectly. And depending on how much you like to fussy cut, you could always stick something else on the outside of the bag too. And I was thinking gift card and something like this, and you could even add like a little congratulations to it um, on mine. Let's see, what did I put? 
Here, I'll leave that out so you can see it. Sending well wishes your way. Because I thought maybe around graduation time, you would send somebody a gift card or give someone. And especially for a graduate this year, they probably deserve a little extra special gift card. Maybe a gift card and money. <laughs> In fact, I have to make a special card. My nephew is graduating from Pine City next week. So I'd like to make him kind of a special card. I'm sure maybe not this one though. I don't think he wants a butterfly. But maybe if it had the right amount of money in it, he wouldn't really care. And so I'm just quickly fussy cutting this. I did actually, so he went to, um, he's graduating from Pine City. And I did, when I was up at the Pine City store, whatever, there's a scrapbook store there. It's very nice, it's locally owned. Um, I bought some Pine City Dragon paper. And then I saved some green and white ribbon that I had that, I don't know if ribbon can be manly, but that looked more, more masculine. And so I'm gonna make him a special card with his school paper. And so we are going up for a social distance grad party, just the immediate family next week in their driveway, I guess. So that'll be nice to see them. All right, so here we have it. So we have our butterfly cut out. I think it looks even better cut out. It's really cool. And let's put our scraps aside. And then all we have to do is put some dimensionals on that. And you do wanna make sure you put them on the lower spot so that it's not gonna to stick to the top because it is gonna overhang to our opening. All right, and do make sure anybody that participates in today's Facebook Live, whether it be you comment or you like, you share, um, you will be entered in next week's drawing. I will be giving a little prize away. And so that's all there is to it. So here are the measurements you would need, and these are the ones that you would want for your inside parts as well. So the Melon Mambo, that's this background here, four and four and a fourth. And then um, the Whisper White is just a quarter inch smaller at three and three fourths by four. And then I did a Daffodil Delight. And that I did at three and three fourths by four. And one last thing to show you is um, this tag punch. This is really fun if you do scrapbooking or if you just like to add little tabs to your cards or any kind of um, pull out cards where you're gonna have a tab that comes out is a really fun tool to have. And this is retiring as well. So this is something I will definitely still be using quite a bit because I like to use it in all of my scrapbooking that I do. And then of course, for my fav this is one of my favorite gift cards. And so all you do is you fold it over and tape it on there. And you can decide how far up you want it. If you were you know, gonna mail this, you just wanna make sure you had enough clearance so that it would still fit in your envelope unless you plan to use a bigger envelope. And so there you have it. There are the cards for today. Let me pull them all in for you to see all in a grouping. And if you would like to tell me which one you like the best, that would be great. I would love to hear everybody's preference. I said everybody is, everybody likes different things I find. And what I like somebody else might not. And although there hasn't been anything that I don't like that I've done with Stampin' Up! But some I do tend to like better. Of course, so we have the super messy. I'm not gonna pull in all of the ones we did today because I don't wanna get them all wet. They do need to dry. But I will take pictures of some of them and I'll get them posted in the next couple of days for you to see in a group because this is really fun. This is probably one of the more fun ones we've done in a long time. Look at how bright and cheerful that looks. Now that would be sending some sunshine. Uh, you could definitely die cut some shapes, Peggy. That would that would work just fine. All right, everybody. So that is our Facebook Live for today, Thursday, March 21st. I hope that you can join me next week for the virtual retirement party. I have some fun things planned, and we will see you all then. I will be posting the times for the Facebook Lives um, coming up soon, probably Monday or Tuesday. I'll post when those times will be. But if you can't catch us live, you can always catch us on the replay. 
And then watch for this week's weekly email. I will have a, a free tutorial of the week. So if you have not joined my email list yet, please do. And all have a wonderful day and we will see you soon. Thanks for watching.